amazing. Uh, Genesis chapter 39. We'll start there. So he left everything he owned <clears throat> in Joseph's, Joseph's charge, and with him there he did not concern himself with anything except the food which he ate. Now Joseph was handsome in form and appearance. It came about after these events that his master's wife looked with desire at Joseph, and, sa and she said, Lie with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, Behold, with me here my master does not concern himself with anything in the house and he has put all that he owns in my charge. There is no one greater in the house than I, and he has withheld nothing from me except you, because you are his wife. How then could I do this great evil and sin against God? As she spoke to Joseph day after day, he did not listen to her and lie <clears throat> to lie beside her or be with her. Now it happened one day that when he went into the house to do his work, and none of the men of the household was there inside, she caught him by the garment, saying, Lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and went outside. When she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and fled outside, she called to the men of the household and said to them, See, he has brought, he has brought in a Hebrew to us to make sport of us. He came in to me to lie with me, and I screamed. When he heard that I raised my voice and screamed, he left his garment beside me and fled, and he went outside. So he left his garment beside her until his master came home. Then she spoke to him with these words, The Hebrew slave whom you brought to us came in to me to make sport of me, and I raised my voice and screamed. He left his garment beside me, and he fled outside. Now when his master heard these words, heard the words of his wife, of which she spoke to him, saying, This is what your slave did to me, his anger burned. So Joseph's master took him and put him into jail, the place where the king's prisoners were confined, and he was there in jail. But the Lord was with Joseph and extended kindness to him and gave him favor in the sight of the chief jailer. <clears throat> the chief jailer committed to Joseph's charge all the prisoners who were in the jail so that whatever was done there, he was responsible for it. The chief jailer did not supervise anything under Joseph's charge because the Lord was with him and whatever he did, the Lord made prosper. Now turn to Daniel chapter 6. Verse 10. Now, when Daniel knew that the document was signed, he entered the house. Now, in his roof chamber, he had windows open towards Jerusalem, and he continued kneeling on his knees three times a day, praying and giving thanks before God as he had been doing previously. Then, when his men came by agreement and found Daniel making petition and supplication before his God, then they approached and spoke before the king about the king's injunction. Did you not sign an injunction that any man who makes a petition to any God? Or man besides you, O king, for thirty days is to be cast into the lion's den. The king replied, The statement is true according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which may not be revoked. Then they answered and spoke before the king, Daniel, who is one of the exiles from Judah, pays no attention to you, O king, or to the injunction which you signed, but keeps making his petition three times a day. Then as soon as the king heard this statement, he was deeply distressed and set his mind on delivering Daniel. And even until sunset, he kept exerting himself to rescue him. Then his men came by agreement to the king and said, Recognize, O king, that it is the law of the Medes and Persians that no injunction or statute which the king establishes may be changed. Then the king gave orders, and Daniel was brought in and cast into the lion's den. The king spoke and said to Daniel, Your God, whom you constantly serve, will himself deliver you. The stone was brought and laid over the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the signet ring of his nobles, so that nothing would be changed in regard to Daniel. Then the king went off to his palace and spent the night fasting, and no entertainment was brought before him, and his sleep fled from him. Then the king arose at dawn, at the break of the day, and went in haste to the lion's den. When he had come near the den for Daniel, he cried out with a troubled voice. The king spoke and said to Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you constantly serve, been able to deliver you from the lion? Then Daniel spoke to the king, O king, live forever. 
how God sent his angel and shut the lions' mouths, and they have not harmed me, inasmuch as I was found innocent before him and also before you. Please turn to Acts chapter 16. Start about verse 22. The crowd rose up together against them, and the chief magistrates tore the robes off them and proceeded to order them to be beaten with rods. When they had struck them with many blows, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to guard them securely. And he, having received such a command, threw them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. But about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns of praise to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly there came a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison house were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer awoke and saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, supposing that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul cried out with a loud voice, saying, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. And he called for lights and rushed in, and trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. And after he brought them out, he said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? These are three very familiar accounts to us from the Bible. Especially Daniel and Elijah were accounts and stories that we knew when we were children. And what these three accounts have in common is, is these were all three were opportunities for people to make choice whether to follow the will of God. And under the new covenant, we would say it was a choice to be Christ-like in, our, in terms of Paul and Silas. And these were big, giant, grand opportunities and instances. We're talking about being under kings and pharaohs and being under prison in the Roman Empire. But we are blessed each and every day with opportunities and most of our opportunities are very small but still every one of them is an opportunity we have opportunities when we're at work we have opportunities when we go to Walmart and it might be letting someone get that parking space that you were trying to get or being in the customer service line and When you're told that you can't return the item instead of doing what you wanted to, you're walking out. It might be an opportunity at school that when you're in junior high, you might be the only boy in the hallway that day or in the locker room that's not using four-letter words. It might be an opportunity that if you're on Facebook or on Instagram as a girl in junior high and high school, you're not the one that's doing things on it that you're not supposed to do. Or if your friend does, that you talk to him that that wasn't a nice thing to do. And we have those small opportunities all the time. Now we read in the Bible about these opportunities that these men had and women have had in times that were extremely extraordinary in terms of being able to test the faith of first the Hebrews and then the Christians. I'm afraid we live in a time that is here and is going to get worse down the road that some of us, and and especially our children, are going to have some of those same opportunities. I don't know how much news people watch, but right now the Supreme Court is deliberating right now about the Defense of Marriage Act in California. And I don't want to be a pessimist, but does anyone in here think that that's going to come out in a favorable decision from our point of view? I don't. I think it's just a matter of time. Um, recently, there was a class, I believe it was in college, I saw this on Fox News just a couple of days ago, where there was this class where you were trying to learn to um, be tolerable And one of the things they had to do is they wanted all the students in the class to write on a piece of paper the the word you. And they were supposed to put it on the floor and then they were supposed to jump on it, step on it, and tear up the piece of paper. You know, because Jesus is just a word. And we should be tolerant of other peoples and other religions. There was one young man in that class who decided not to do that. And he was going to be 
punished for that. Luckily, there were enough Christians who had had an outcry that the university had said that he's not going to be expelled, and actually there's going to be an investigation into the class of the professor making someone do that. But these are just two small things that happened recently, and anyone who gets on and looks at the news every day, I think the things I do before I leave my office to start seeing my patients is I just kind of check Fox News real quick and see kind of what stuff's been happening. But those type of things are here now, and they're going to happen, and it's going to happen more and more. And compared to when I was a kid, I think we're going to have these opportunities that it's going to be a lot harder to stand up and be Christ-like and do the right thing. And it's going to be a lot harder for our kids when everyone around them is telling them that you're a bigot and there's something wrong with you if you're not okay, for example, with gay marriage. And so we really got to support our kids in being able to make these right by decisions. Um, we don't like to ever end devotion without giving an opportunity for anyone who may have need of this church to come forward as we stand now and sing. <laughs>